Hi, everyone. Um, just felt maybe from uh, the lecture earlier this week, there were still some lingering questions out there on doing the CVP with discounted fees. Um, and the case that we presented in class uh, was in regards to an HMO approaching a clinic uh, saying that they wanted a 40% discount on uh, their patient population and how you would determine as a, a manager or financial manager whether that discount is going to be beneficial to you as an organization or if you should pass on the discount. So what I wanted to do is just kind of give a little more in-depth video here or recording here uh, to go over the discounted fee so that you can um, refer back to it. So what I have set up here is the slide that we went over um, in class that day. Uh, we have the undiscounted revenue, discounted revenue, um, all the way down through profit. And what I'm going to do is bring up an Excel file here that I created for us to go uh, through the example that we went through in class. Um, so what I have set up initially is the uh, P&L statement for Atlanta Clinic. Now this is the example that came from pages 175 through 77 in the text. Um, so you can follow along in the text uh, with this video um, as we go through and just try to explain where we get these numbers from. So total revenues, uh, we know that we are going to charge $100 a visit. Um, we have 75,000 patients as our base case or our relevant range. Uh, so that's going to give us a little over seven, around seven and a half million um, in total revenues. Then we have our total variable cost, which we were able to get uh, off of page 166 um, and how we calculate uh, our total var variable cost is um, the total variable cost uh, total divided by the amount of visits, which is 75,000. That's where we get the 2818, which is going to come into use later when we start um, calculating the contribution margin. But that's going to give us a little over 2 million in total variable costs, which is which are different than expenses. Um, so total variable costs is going to amount to a little over $2 million. Now where the 2818 comes in um, into play is when we start calculating what the contribution margin is. So if you'll recall, we take the $100 in revenue, subtract from that our variable cost, and that's going to give us our contribution margin of $71.82. Um, so we'll multiply that by our base case number of 75000 to get $5,386,500. And we know that our fixed costs are going to amount to four thousand, uh, sorry, four million nine hundred sixty-seven thousand four hundred sixty-two. So what we do to calculate what our profit is, and you can see the formula um, that I have in the cell here. And this is why I really want to encourage you to use Excel because they can do a lot of the calculations for you that otherwise you would have to do manually. You can simply um, subtract the contribution margin from the fixed cost and we can see that we'll have a profit of $419,038 um, in this scenario which is which is the base scenario that was set up through the example. Now if you're unfamiliar with Excel or how to put in formulas, how I did this, um, you will put in an equal sign in any cell um, and in this case we want to subtract the contribution margin, subtract from that the fixed cost. So you'll click on contribution margin until you see the appropriate um, cell number beside your equals. You'll subtract from that the fixed cost. And in this case this is cell F7 and that will give you your um, profit there, 419000 So we can see how to calculate that. But the, the case presented in class and the case presented in the book is um, an HMO has come to Atlanta Clinic saying that they want a 40% discount um, on their particular population that visits this clinic. Um, and now you as a financial manager have to go through and decide whether you're going to take that negotiated discount of 40% or if you're going to risk losing 25,000 patients. Um, uh, and and their business uh, because that is the amount um, the HMO is negotiating for is 25,000 patients. So the case presented um, again start back with our base case volume we have 75,000 at $100 um, 
And again, the HMO wants a third of that volume to receive a 40% discount. So we'll simply do our 75,000 times one third, which will give us 25,000. Um, and we know that 25,000, they're trying to negotiate a 40% discount. So we'll take our original, um, original fee of $100, multiply that by 40, 40% uh, to get $40, and then subtract that from 100. And that's how we're going to end up with the negotiated rate of $60 per visit. Now this is going to come in handy later when we start looking at um, whether we need to reject the proposal or if we need to accept the proposal. So as we start to move through, we see our initial reaction. Um, you know, our average cost per visit is going to be $94.41, which was originally calculated back on page 167 if you need to go refer to that. But when we start to consider the 40% discount, we know our original um, calculation, average cost per visit, $94.41. Now if we take $60 away from that, uh, because that's the amount we're going to be reimbursed through the 40% discount, we're actually going to lose $34.41 per visit. And we can kind of extrapolate that out and estimate that over the course or over those 25,000 visits, um, the amount that we would lose is $860,000, a little over $860,000. So initially right off the bat we would probably decline um, the proposal and, and, and forego the 25,000 patients. But we need to take a little deeper dive into it. Um, so first what I'd like you to do is go through and uh, calculate your, your new and your old contribution margins and I'll tell you how we get to, to the numbers that we have here. So our old contribution margin again uh, when we originally calculated it based off our 75,000 visits all things being equal was $71.82. Um, but now that we have this this discount proposal on the, on the table we have to calculate a new contribution margin because we're going to be reimbursed differently for two different sets of population. So our new contribution margin, and we'll solve this one right here, our new contribution margin, we need to look at, <coughs> excuse me, the average, uh, the average per visit revenue that we're going to bring, be bringing in on the two different populations. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take two-thirds times our original amount of 100, now how, how did I know to take two-thirds? Uh, because back here um, in the original description the HMO is saying they want a third of the volume to get a 40% discount. So we know two-thirds is still going to uh, have their original $100 amount tied to that. So two-thirds is going to have a little over $66 and then one-third, calculate that here, <clears throat> is going to be uh, receiving the 40% discount, so we'll times that by our new discounted amount, which we saw up here uh, when, we, when we were talking about the discount. And they're going to receive, a tw they're going to be at $20 revenue. So when we add those together, and again, this is where Excel can come, come in handy. Um, simply put your equals in click on the first amount. We know that we want to add that to our second amount for our second population. So we're going to get a new contribution margin of 86.67 if we round up. Um, and that's where this 86.67 came from. Because we have two different populations now, we're going to have two different types of revenue coming in based on those that are still paying the full $100 and those that are paying the new discounted rate of $60. Um, so our new contribution margin, um, or our new uh, revenue structure, um, is going to be presented down if we when when we start to talk about accepting the proposal. But our new contribution margin is now going to be fifty eight dollars and forty nine cents, as opposed to the seventy one dollars and eighty two cents we saw earlier. And again, why we why it's dropped from 71.82 to 58.49 is because we have a new um, average that we're paying for revenue, or the a new average for revenue 
because of these two new population groups, which we just calculated 8667. So now we need to subtract our variable cost from that, that new um, 8667 as opposed to the $100. And that's how we're going to get the 5849 because we're working with a new average revenue. So now that we have all of our numbers in place, um, we know what our new contribution margin is. Um, we know what our discounted amount is. We can move down and start to compare either rejecting the proposal or accepting the proposal and which one's going to be best for our organization. So let's say we're going to, we're going to, we want to look at rejecting the proposal and how that's going to impact us. So we know um, we can set it up just like we did here at the top. The only difference that we're going to do here or make here is if the HMO does not get the 40% on the third of our base case numbers, which was 75,000, then they're going to take that 25,000 elsewhere. So essentially we'll lose 25,000 visits or 25,000 patients. Um, so we need to deduct that from our uh, volume that we're going to be multiplying our revenue number by. So now we're going to be multiplying 100 times 50,000 because again, remember our 25,000 third of our visits are, are gone now. Um, so that's going to give us uh, $5 million. We'll still have the same variable costs. Variable costs have not changed. So that's going to be 2818 times, again, our new volume of 50,000 which is going to give us uh, almost 1.5 million, just a little bit under that. And now our new contribution margin, uh, because nothing else has changed, we're not taking a different uh, amount in revenue, we're still working from the $100, so we can still work from the 7182. And again, if you need to check it, you know, all you have to do is your revenues minus your variable costs are going to give you your contribution margin. So we'll multiply that by our new uh, volume number, which is going to give us about uh, three and a half mil, a little over three and a half million dollars. We know that our fixed costs do not change, uh, so fixed cost is still at almost five million dollars. And how we're going to calculate our profit or loss in this case, contribution margin, so and subtract from that your fixed cost, which is going to, uh, if we reject the proposal, we're looking at a loss of. Uh, almost 1.4 million dollars. Now I know there's a variance uh, between this example and what's presented in the book on page 176, but I think it's a, um, a typographical error in the book um, in terms of um, their, how they've added the revenues and variable costs together um, because you can do some addition and clearly see that five million and uh, one and a half million did not equal 5.3 million. Um, and again, I'm referring to the example in the book on page 176 at the bottom. So work from this cost structure. Again, I believe that was just some type of topographical error. So if we reject the proposal, we're looking at a loss of $1.3 million by rejecting the proposal and losing that 25,000 uh, visits. So now we need to look at accepting the proposal. Again, what is the new average per visit revenue of the two different patient groups? Now this goes back up to when we were solving for our new contribution margin. So we're taking two thirds of our business is going to be uh, giving us a revenue of $100 per visit. And now we're going to have a 40% discount off of that $100 for a third of our business. So we're going to take two thirds times 100 to get that uh, revenue amount, because that's how much two thirds of our business is going to be paying. And we're going to add that to a third that's going to be paying $60. And again, that's going to give us our 8667, which is our average uh, per visit revenue combined for our patient groups now. So this should give us a total revenue of um, six and a half million dollars because now we're working back up with our 75,000 visits because we're looking at accepting the proposal. So how we're going to set up the P&L statement for this, we're going to have an additional line item at, or actually two different two additional line items added in here in terms of discounted revenues and now we have to calculate our total revenues. So undiscounted revenues, again 100 times 50,000 because we know two thirds of our visits are going to uh, have the $100 revenue amount attached to them. So we'll have 5 million again. 
But now we need to look at discounted revenues. So $60 times 25,000 is going to give us one and a half million, 25,000 because that's the third that the discount was negotiated on. So that's going to give us a total revenues. Um, and in the, in the uh, spirit of staying consistent with the book, I know this is going to equal 6500 uh, sorry, $6,500,250. Um, but they're saying, you know, there can be some rounding errors in there. So I'm going to stay consistent with what the book says. Um, 8667 times 75000 um, And the book is saying that we will get $6.5 million dollars. Total variable costs have not changed. Um, we're still at 2818 times our 75,000 volume, which is going to give us a uh, little over $2 million. So now we're going to have our contribution margin. Now remember, this is where we have changed. Um, our old contribution margin, if you'll recall, was $71.82. Um, but now, because we're working from a different average revenue per visit, um, of 86, sorry, here we go, 86.67. We need to take 86.67 and subtract from that 28.18 to get our new contribution margin of 58.49. Now we'll conduct business as normal, multiply that by our, our um, base case volume of 75,000 because that's how much we're bringing in now. We're going to get 4,386,500. We know that our fixed costs have not changed, so we're still sitting at just a little under $5 million. So our profit, or again loss in this case, is going to be $580,000. And how we calculated that again, or you can use Excel to do this formula for you, you can simply take your contribution margin and subtract from that your fixed costs to get your profit or loss in this case. Um, so when we when you break it down, initially your reaction is um, that you're not going to accept the uh, proposal, but once we start digging into it, we can see that rejecting the proposal in the long run is actually going to cost us more than if we were to accept the proposal um, because we'll be taking a far less amount of loss with accepting the proposal than we would with rejecting the proposal and losing that 25,000 visit number. Um, I hope this helps to clear up the example. Like I said, I felt like there were still some lingering questions out there. Um, I'll update the slides as well. I know uh, um, there was an error, a topographical error on my part on the slide, so I'll get those updated and posted. Um, but if you have any questions, you know, please feel free to call me, uh, stop by, email me anytime. I also keep Skype up on my computer all the time for a lot of my more online students that may not be able to make it to campus during office hours. Um, so please, you know, feel free to reach out to me. I'll put this example up on D2L as well so that you can refer back to it. Um, and again, you know, just wanted to uh, go over in a little bit more detail um, discounts um, and how they work with fee-for-service when we do CVP.